Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course of organic farming. So, we have covered different topics of organic farming, what is the definition of organic farming, what is the different principles, what about the different type of organic sources we use for organic nutrient management and we have also learned the integrated pest and management, also the organic disease management, weed management practices and what about the different type of organic management practices for field crops, horticultural crops, what are the different types of composting how to do, have to do the vermicomposting and different topics of organic farming. Now, in this topic, I will mainly cover what is the organic certification, why the certification is needed and what is the different types of certification, what is the value branding and what is the potential of this marketing this organic product. Unless a farmer is getting the certification and he can sell is a premium price, so probably he will not get a much better benefit. So, whenever a farmers or anywhere people are doing the organic farming, the certification is very essential integrate part of the organic farming system. Only then he get the higher premium price for selling in the market, either maybe in the domestic market or you have to sell in the market in other countries and earn a huge amount of foreign exchange. So, if we see the certification is the action or process of providing someone or something with an official document attesting to a status or level of achievement. There may be two type of specification, certification product certification, process certification. So, if you see it is the process of certifying that a certain product has passed and performance tests and quality assurance and meets the qualification criteria. So, there are lots of certification is there. now value bending is that you need is Philips, oh this is Philips ball. So, you have some idea this is quality some status qualification is there. Similarly, there are lots of certification processes there but in case of organic also when there should be certification and there should be some logo, logo attached with the food product you can understand whether it is organic or not organic and what is the status of organic it is PGS organic or it is organic by the NPO organic and what is the logo and what is the value brand and this is very much important for our organic farming and if you see everyone know in organic farming we cannot apply any inorganic fertilizer or pesticide and we have to done different types of crop rotation, diversification and other different type of agricultural activities. So, our health ecosystem, our human health, not also the soil health will be maintained. So, what is organic food? Organic food means any form of food or raw materials may be grain, oil species produced in a manner close to the nature without using any man-made or synthetic man-made. So, organic farming also prohibits the use of the GMO. So, by getting different type of certification by the logo, a consumer can understand it is the organic product. It has been go through some organic process of the certification, so that they have not used any insecticide or pesticide or fungicide and there will be very less chance of getting any pesticide residue. So, farmers has the preference to choose which type of food he want to take. So, why is the organic food? Because nowadays due to the lots of pesticide residue in different type of vegetables and fruits and due to their health hazards, the consumers are nowadays preferring to organic so that a better quality food. So, but for that certification is very much essential. Otherwise, in the market anyone can come tomorrow and tell this is my organic produce and you cannot know which is organic and which is adulterated and who is telling true or lie. So, this certification helps the process, the certification helps to identify from the consumer point of view which will organic and not and also the farmers who are doing the organic farming really or genuinely they can get the premium price. So, scope of organic farming we already know that also offer trade opportunities in developing and developing countries. Nowadays in international market everywhere there is a tremendous growth of organic produce, everyone is want organic food. Even in the different type of cities of India and other parts people are wanting for the organic farming. So, the always scope a new era of business, new era of different type of cultivation package of practices has been developed by different agencies, maybe state agriculture universities or the ICR research institutes and how a farmer by using different type of this type of organic package of practices doing organic farming, this is the 
question and after only the getting the certification and marketing he will get the higher value. And if we see the world of agriculture, we have more than 186 countries that are doing organic farming, but if you see the 71.5 million hectare is area is there that is 1.5 per percent of the total arable land, 35.7 million at the wild harvest and 2.8 million producer of the organic in the world. Where is the higher area? The 50 percent area if you see is go to the Oceania that is mean Australia. One country the total area 50 percent area under him and if you see what is the different type of continents? If you see India although we have a 17 percent population of the world our organic area is very less only 3 percent and one state is Sikkim has already wholly declared the organic as compared to the other states. And we will also next slide however go whatever the different area of India and what is the growth and how which area is the highest area and number of farmers like that. And if you see there, there, is, there is a tremendous chance of for the India to make a major organic hub of the country. And if you see what is the global market. The global market if you see is billions and billions of dollars. So, majority if you see our area country Although Australia is the total area of the organic is higher, but where the people are consuming more because that is very much important when you are producing organic and certification we have to see where we have to sell this market out of India. So, Aust only America that is United States of America has 42 percent of the global circuit of the total organic consumption and there are lots of availabilities there. If you go to the any US market, maybe Walmart or somewhere, anywhere, the same milk is available inorganic and uh, that is not organic maybe 2 dollar per gallon, but organically it is 5 to 6 dollar per gallon. So, consumers are ready to pay very high price for this organic produce. And if you see after USA, Germany is 11 percent, France 9 percent and also the different type of European countries maybe Switzerland, Italy, UK. So, this is our destination whenever we do for organic we have to take care in this our mind this is the country where we can export our organic produce. If you see the retail, now which products, which type of different type of products is mostly going for the organic. If you see bakery and confectionery 20 percent, ready meal, soy meal 11 percent, dairy is very important 31 percent, majorities are only going for the dairy product. So, and if you see different type of beverages there, juice is very higher rank 41 percent. And if you see our northeastern condition pineapple, one of the best quality pineapple in the world. But if we made certain certification process, we can make this type of juice and beverages and after the certification, we can sell this type of quality juice in the international market and farmers remunerative will be enhanced. Similarly, if we see the what is the growth of organic agriculture in India. In our vision organic policy 2005, our target by the government of India to convert 10 percent of our total cultivable land to do organic. If total is 100 hectare area, it is not necessary and not possible also to convert the whole India into organic. So, there may be we cannot supply too much of organic nutrient and we cannot control all the insect pests and diseases only by organic means. So, we are always promoting for organic some for part and area where farmers is already doing organic or farmers are using very less amount of insecticide, fertilizer and pesticides may be the health of the northeast. Similarly, it is also being promoted for the high value crops then in niche crops for the fruits for the high value vegetables and also for the basmati rice, scented rice, johar rice and other things. So, in this condition our target to cover 10 percent, but if you see what is the total our area, our area at present is 2.8 million hectare only 2 percent, but so by target by 2025 our government target to make additional 2.5 million hectare to be the certification. So, that our organic production will be enhanced, we can supply in our domestic market, also we can supply surplus or in the international market. So, total area is 42 point lakh hectare, wild herbs is 13 cultivated and there are two type of different type of production is there, one is NPOP certification, one is the PGS certification. In my later slide I will know, I will show you what is the different type of certification process and how a farmer can apply for this certification. And if you see the organic agriculture, if you see from 2000 to 2000 our most of the organic research in India has been started in this year. And Indian Council of Agriculture Research play a very pivotal role for enhancing this organic area in India. There are lots of multi 
institutional research project in the form of network project of organic farming NPOF has started in the year 2004. And now this different research institutes, we have more than 16 state and 20 research station are working on the organic farming. So, from 2014 we have seen how much the area has been increased. So, every year in, you see the growth is very high, organic area is increasing, increasing, increasing. So, we have seen what total 13.25 lakh, this is farmers are directly involved with the organic farming. And there are lots of other middlemen, maybe some processor, value addition is doing on. So, lots of people nowadays directly or indirectly, they are depend on the organic farming. And the growth is very high. And if you see, what about the different type of major organic states in India? In for India, the maximum area is under the Madhya Pradesh, is near about the 50 percent of the total area and does organic. But only one state wholly has gone for the organic that is the Sikkim. Meghalaya, a very hill state, only 3 percent of the organic area. But if we see the production, although the area is highest under the Madhya Pradesh, but Maharashtra produce also nearby 35 percent after the Madhya Pradesh. Although the Madhya Pradesh area is 50 percent, Maharashtra area is 16 percent, but Maharashtra is neck to neck in case of production because the productivity of the crops, whatever growing under the Maharashtra condition is very high. So, unless we are getting more productivity or total production will not enhance. So, this is the export statistics of India. Total volume of export is 8,88,180 metric ton in 2020-21 according to the latest data of the EPEDA. So, organic food realization also we are getting about 1040 million US dollar and there is a enough chance to enhance double, quadruple or again increasing 10 times of this export potential in the near future. And for that very much we have to take quality produce, we have to make the certification and then only we can sell in the international market for getting this extra premium price. If we see what wherever we are executing, because whenever we are producing some organic crops, we have to see in the market, because everything is market driven. So, where we have to sell? USA. Europe, Canada, Switzerland, Australia, this is the some important destination where we can sell our organic market. And whatever we are applying, nowadays we see our majority is the soya meal for the oil and what are the soya meal is there that we are selling in the international market. But there are lots of chance for our different ginger, maybe turmeric, maybe different type of fruits, vegetables, pineapples and different other crops where we can also sell in the international market and we can earn a very good amount of money. By this process, lots of farmers livelihood standards can be enhanced. So, if you see the annual growth in our organic market country wise, United States is the highest volume and after that European Union, Canada, Switzerland and Australia and total volume is also very high. So, millions and millions of dollars nowadays in the agricultural market for this organic farming. And everywhere we have seen this growth rate is very high. This may be double within the next 5 years. So, always we have to be ready to catch this international market and that is only be possible by proper organic certification, value addition and market. If we see the different type of what is the exported and value of product, processed feed is the highest condition after that the oil seed cereal millet. And also we are selling different type of animals like medicinal, dry fruits, coffee, pulses, fodder, tree. So, whenever we go for organic farming pot, not only for our domestic purpose, certain farmers or entrepreneurs going for organic farming for selling in the international market point of view, he or she have to see which of the produce has the higher demand in the market internationally. And according to he can go for this production of organic under this high value crops. And only whenever he were also invested a lot, so there is a chance of getting enough remuneration for the entrepreneur or the farmers by selling this type of particular products which is a very high demand in the international market. So, energy, what is the energy concern for this major quality factor? Our upper middle class also ready to pay prices. So, not only we have to sell this organic produce only in the international market. Everywhere is cities and big towns, middle class, upper class, some people, they can also want to afford the organic farming. But they want every time search of organic food, but we have not enough organic outlet or organic produce as of now to give the whatever the consumer is preferring. So, we need required healthy fed. Dairy product, fresh products are vegetable. I have always told dairy product, fruits and vegetable. 
this is the highest demand whenever go for organic. Why? Because whenever go anything, so we have research has been done, this whatever the vegetables is growing in the peri-urban area, they have the highest pesticide residue. So, for the always consumer want this vegetable organic, so that majority chance of pesticide will be reduced. Similarly, they can also selling directly, the result demand is growing, you see 28 to 35 percent annual growth. So, that is a very huge growth. And due to we have seen in case of COVID-19 pandemic, people also lots of nutrition has been everywhere. You have to boost your defense, you have to boost your immunity and different other system. And nowadays people are searching more and more organic food as compared to the pre-COVID situation. So let us demand understand the volume and supply. You have to always think whenever you are producing something inorganically, how much amount we are producing. Your volume is very less you cannot go for selling in the international market or other market, you have to only sell in the local market. Medium volume was seasonal, so you cannot supply throughout the year, that is also local market. But if you see good volume, continuous supply, so you can open a retail store or direct you can also apply the direct home to home. So whatever the different type of organic produce is growing in a particular location or a particular farm, accordingly you have to think the strategy how I will market my produce. If you see high quality, there is no question of quality, quality is very good. Maybe one or two commodity, not very much commodity, but enough commodity is producing certain organic farm. So, ginger, turmeric, king chili, this is very important crop. For that, you can sell to the export. You can directly export, otherwise there are lots of exporter, but you have to grow certain quality standard. Your product may be checked by different international laboratory. So, you have to, your quality should be very high, it should be pesticide ratio and it should be go for valid standard certification process. So, identify organic food in the market, how you go, it is organic or not organic. Whenever you have seen the different type of international market, you can go, it is veg or it is non-veg. So, different, the different type of colors is given in the product. Similarly, logo is very much important. You know this is the Tata brand, this is the Maruti brand, this is the Hyundai brand. So, this brand value has very much importance as I am the consumer. So, consumer always want to know in the organic market, wherever this produce is organic or not organic, you need have to some type of logo. And you see, as per the requirement of the Food Safety and Standard Organic Food Regulation Act, all organic food must carry a Joybik Bharat logo along with its certification logo. You see, this is the logo of the Joybik Bharat. If a certain product is the market having this logo, then you can assure this is come through the organic process, certification has been done, quality will be high, pesticide residue will be very low, so you can take this product. Similarly, there is supported with also tagline Joybik Bharat for easy identification, the logo has the adherence to the NSOP, that is the National Standards of Organic Produce. So, organic certification, it is a process of certification involving a set of production standards for growing, storage, processing, packaging and shipping that include avoidance of synthetic chemicals, we have not applied fertilizer, pesticide, antibiotic, keeping detailed written production and sale record, you will need in your farm when is the produce, how much is the value, everything. Maintaining street physical separation, suppose you have sometimes in your farm you are growing some other crops. So, there should be enough distance between these two type of crops, so there should be separation, physical separation, so that they are not mixing your organic produce with the others. Otherwise, there may be chance of adulteration and mixing. And also, always there is a on-site inspection should be done by different certification agency. If they are happy, if they know they a farmers or a entrepreneurs has gone through all the standard protocols, then only they are given the certification. And this certification is not necessary, you get one time certification that will be for your lifeline. So, always there will be inspection by these farms, so that continuous monitoring should be needed for the, there should not be chance of any adulteration or mixing. So, what is the purpose of certification? Certification essentially aimed the regulating production or process as per the national standards of organic production. It is Indian national standard. It address a growing worldwide demand. It intend to the SEO quality and prevent fraud. And it also identifies the supplier of products approved for use in the certified production. It is essentially aimed at regulating and facilitating the sale of organic product to the consumer. And individual certification bodies have their own cervix mass who can act as a branding to the consumers. So, certification is very much needed. And there may be some initial problem of the farmer getting the certification, maybe the NOSAP or third party certification. But if you want to catch the international market, if you want to sell your produce outside of India, and we have a very high capacity for our dairy products, for our different types of spices, ginger, turmeric, our chili 
or pineapple and lots of other fruits which are unique in the India, we can catch the international market with proper certification process. So, there is a process how converting a farm is organic. There is some area in maybe Oranchal Pradesh or where farmers are using very less amount of fertilizer. So, it is very easy to convert your farm to organic to inorganic to organic or it is traditionally organic by default, but in certain part where farmers are using a good amount of fertilizer and insects pesticide, then also want to do the organic. So, immediately within he cannot claim his product or produce is organic. So, this needs some time maybe 3 year, 2 year, 4 year process, this is called the conversion process. Initially a farm is inspected and repose is lost under the supervision, it will be under supervision in the conversion period first 12 months. After 12 months, it should be upgraded to in conversion if the second inspection is satisfactory. Then it said must complete 2 years. So, after 2 years it will, we will tell it is the certification. First one year it will be there, after that again there will be some inspection and again you have to wait for another 2 years, after that you can tell my produce production is the organic. So, you have to see there cannot be organic and non-organic growing on the same species, same property in the same management control. In the same field without too much physical distance you cannot grow one type of organic and one side is inorganic because there will be too much chance of mixing. So, always you have to make too much distance or physical barrier between your organic farm and also the inorganic farm. So, this whenever you also grow from inorganic to organic in some condition, your soil fertility buildup is the main important of organic farming. So, initial 3 or 4 years when a farmer is converting his inorganic farm to the organic farm, he can get also little bit of yield penalty, may be 20 percent, 25 percent, 50 percent there will be yield loss. So, but after 3 or 4 years, when the soil fertility is maintained, when the soil fertility is improved in such a level, so that at that point you are getting at par yield. Even you are getting 5 to 10 percent less yield in your organic farm, but you will get 20 percent, 30 percent, 50 percent higher premium price. So, ultimately profit will be more in that condition. So, now what is the different type of certification process existed in India? There are two type of mainly certification process existed in India. One is the third party certification process, second is the PGS that is participatory guarantee scheme certification. So, third party certification you see it has to adhere to the national program on organic farming that is NPOP. It is a kind of third party certification in which the farm or processing of the agriculture produce is certified in accordance with national or international organic standards by an accredited organic certification agency. So, there are lots of accredited certification agency existed in India and they have been given approval by the India. So, they will be your agency, they will inspect your farm. So, they are we are killing the third party, it is not directly. Similarly, this has been facilitated by the APEDA, Agricultural Process Food and Export Development Authority and it is come under the Ministry of Commerce and Industries. So, this third party certification is coming under the APEDA, Ministry of Commerce and Industry because this third party certification mostly doing to whatever the produce we are doing this process of certification, we can sell in the international market. Whatever the different types of PGS I will tell you later that comes under the Ministry of Agriculture and where we cannot sell our produce outside India, but we can sell our produce within the India. So, a farmer has to choose what is his objective, he want to supply in the domestic market or whether he want to supply his organic produce in the international market and according to he or she have to choose which type of organic certification I will go. If he want to sell the produce in the international market, he have to go to the NPOF standard that is the third party certification, but if he want to go for the domestic market, he can opt for the PGS. This process has been launched in case of 2001. And it is internationally recognized so that there is no problem you can sell your produce in USA, Switzerland, Italy, European Union and it is equivalence of the European Union and Switzerland also USDA recognized conformity assessment system is there. So, these when a farmers want to sell his produce internationally in the these countries he should be follow this type of third party guarantee certification system and it has been operated I have been told under the Ministry of Commerce and Industries Government of India. So, what is this aim? What the aim of this NPO is that providing the means to evaluate certification programs, developing policies for the certification and development of organic products, producing the national standards for the organic product, facilitating certification for the organic products in conformity to the NCOPs, developing regulation for the use of national organic certification mark 
and encouraging the development of organic farming and organic processing. So, whenever a farmer is going for this third party certification, there are lots of laid out rules and standard protocols under this NCOAP or NPOP standards. Only when a farmer fulfill all these criteria in his farm, only he will get the certification tag and only he can sell his market in the international forum. And if you see there are different national accreditation body has been designated because a government cannot directly everywhere go to give the certification. So, there are a lot of accreditation body who is get the permission from the government, they work as a third party, they will different mechanism, they will inspect the field with their manpower and ultimately they will help you to get the certification for the third party. One is one is the APEDA, Agricultural Process Food Product Export Development Authority. Coffee board is there for the coffee, if you want to certification for your coffee. Spices board is there, if you want to uh, third party certification for different spices, maybe ginger, chili, turmeric. Tea board is there, if you want to sell your organic tea outside India. Coconut development board is there and also directorate of Keju and cocoa, because these are always high value crops. And always there is a, this type of product has a very high demand in the international market. They all also very easy to save, easy to store. So, this is a different type of accreditational body which government has been help and this accreditational body are helping the farmer to get the third party certification. This is the different also accredited certification bodies under the NPOP. If you see, Bureau of Heritage Limited, EcoCart, IMO Control, Indian Organic Certification Agency, OneSat International Private Limited. So, SGS private limited, CU inspection, Uttarakhand state organization certification, sometime it is given to the private organization, sometime it is given also the government organization, different state, state government organization also can do the certification. Also the Rajasthan state organizing agency, ISFCOP, ADT, Aditi organic certification, Chhattisgarh certification society, Tamil Nadu organic certification department, they are also doing very good role. And the Interic private limited, similarly Madhya Pradesh state organic certification, I have already told the maximum area under the organic as well as the production and the Madhya Pradesh. So, for the third party certification, this responsibility has given to the Madhya Pradesh state organic certification agency. Similarly, Odisha and also the Gujarat have, Uttar Pradesh has organic certification agency, Karnataka, Sikkim. This is the only one state in India where the whole state has been converted to organic and no inorganic farming is been being allowed there. So, the, they have also a state organic certification agency. Similarly, there are some different companies also there, reliable organization certification and baltistic testing limited. So, these are I have given some example, this is the testing organization. Suppose a farmer is growing certain type of organic crops, maybe Rajasthan, so he get to which type of agency, maybe some private agency if it is available nearby, otherwise may have, there may be Rajasthan state organic mission. So, you have to contact there and you have to know how to register yourself and after what is the conversion period, when will be the inspection will be done and what is the different type of protocols you have to follow, after that you will get your organic certification. Now, the national standards for organic certification, NSOP, it is grouped under the following categories. How? First, the conversion is near, very much important, 3, 4, 4 period. Then, crop production you have started, then you go for the duration of is complete, whatever the fertilization policy, what is the different type of package, labeling, storage, transport, this all you have to follow, different rules. And whenever you passed all the standard protocols in our agricultural process or producing certain type of crops under organically, then you will get the logo, you will get the certification. And ultimately, this India Organic, this logo is a certification for organically farm products manufactured in India, India Organic. It is clearly given. This certification mark also this food product confirm that is the national standards of organic produce. And if you see, what is the different type of sample organic for? It is available everywhere, if farmers can go for the internet, otherwise he can collect this type of forms from the state development, whatever the organic certification agency or the private agency. One I have just given example from the Tamil Nadu, it will be the name and address of the farmers, location of the farm very much needed, what is the certification report for which he need crop production, for honey, wild collection or dairy, which type of is needed, NPUP standard, European standard or others and if you show total area total number of plot, similarly which type of cropping system he is following, whatever the crop he want to in his farm, everything he has to maintain details. After that whatever the input he has given to previous crop, whether he have given too much pesticide or fertilizer in the prior condition and what is the buffer zone details, 
boundary of the farm whether there is too much any fertilizer industry or any pesticide residue industry or pesticide industry is there similarly plant production measures what he is filling in his farm sources of the manure either you are producing the manure is your own farm otherwise you are producing the purchasing from the from the outside so you don't know what is the source everything you have to there definitely so the source the seed it is chemically treated seed or chemically untreated seed where you purchase the seed from the state government farm or from the private organization what is the type of soil specificity is there and what about the different type of urge management practices so this all this information he have to maintain in his farm only that after the inspection he will get the certification so apart from the what about the different type of manures you are using in organic farm and what is the source of manure a farmers also have to note what is the source of irrigation because sometimes if they are using water irrigation source from the sewage sludge or from the municipal drainage so they there are also lot of contamination is there lots of heavy metal and other is there so source of irrigation is also very much important where they are using rain fed oil can contamination risks is there what about the different type of equipment maybe hired or own also the drying yard facility or storage facility animal husbandry details what about the different type of livestock and what about the different type of vaccination or medicine you are using for the livestock that everything you have to maintain in that form and only after the declaration as uh, everything i uh, farmers and there are different type of inspection different periodical inspection will be there and after the everything is satisfied and there will be the quality is assured only he will get the certification second i have already told this is the third party certification where that is very much necessary and it is approved by the different international organization to sell our produce to the european union usa or other foreign countries but every time a farmers cannot grow for this type of certification because it needs time it needs lot of documentation of every activities and it also little bit costly but a farmers or farmers group if they want to do organically they are doing the organically but they have not so much resources so there is a new process initiated by our government of india to facilitate this type of organic farmers how that is called participatory guarantee scheme certification where you cannot sell your produce outside india or international market but there is no bar you can sell your produce anywhere within the india for our domestic market and if you see every hotel town cities and the middle class and high uh, upper people who they are ready to pay some extra money for getting quality organic food so for that this process has been initiated it is lords it is a letter that you see march 2011 and it cover under the ministry of agriculture and farmers welfare previously the our third party certification comes under the ministry of commerce but it directly under the ministry of agriculture to facilitate and to easily convert lots of our area under organic certification to supply for our domestic produce similarly according to this system quality assurance initiative that is locally relevant emphasizes the participation of stakeholders including producer and consumers and which operates outside the framework of the third party certification in it is a process in which people in similar situation assess inspect and verify the production process of each other so it is a mutually trusting process and collectively declare by within a group that this is organic it is facilitated by also by the ministry of agriculture and whenever in the third party certification under the ministry apeda is taking care of that certification our national center for organic farming that is situated in the gaziabad it held as the secretariat so it is the top most body who is control this pgs type of certification so there are four pillars of this certification that is participatory guarantee scheme certification first is the participation by name participatory so stakeholder may be producer may be consumer retailer trader ngos gram panchayat and government organization agency are collectively responsible for the designing operating and decision making direct communication among the stakeholder helps to create an integrity and trust based approach with transparency in the decision making second is the shared vision it is the collective responsibility for implementation and decision making driven by a common shared vision so different type of farmers can make a group 10 farmer 20 farmer 30 farmer they can collectively decision what we have to do in our organic farm similarly transparency is very much needed under it will be transparent transparency then you don't know what is going behind so at the grassroots level transparency is maintained through the active participation of the producer in the organic guarantee process 
So all the farmers they can help to each other, they can inspect the one farm to another farm and after that transpiration process only it will go for the PGS certification. Trust, it is a fundamental premise of the PGS that idea that producer can be trusted and the organic guarantee system can be an expression and verification of this trust. And this mechanism for include a producer pledge made through a witness signing of a declaration, they make a pledge and you have to trust on this place, they are not using any inorganic fertilizer or pesticides. And retain collective undertakings by the group to abide by the norms, principles and standards of the PGS. So, two separate logo in case of PGI India certification system is used. One is PGS India Green and another is PGS India, if you ever see this is organic. So, when we are using this PGS India Green, because initially I have already told for a farm to declare as organic, it takes sometimes 3-4 years time. So, initial period is the conversion period. So, that is not organically yet certified, but you are processing toward the organic farming. So, this green logo will represent the status of the organic farming is under conversion period. The conversion period for seasonal crops, maybe rice, maybe wheat is 24 months, that is 2 years. And for perennial crops, maybe fruit trees and others, it is 36 months, that is 3 years. From where? From the date of the farmer joining under this certification system. So, within this system, he can also produce his sale, but that is called PGS Green. So, the editor can understand, oh, it is PGS India Green, and it is not yet fully organically certified, but it is going to the conversion. And similarly, when they will get the certification, Organic logo will represent the complete organic farming status which is issued 24 months and after the 36 month. 21st maybe or seasonal crop rice, sweet, any type of pulse, soil seed and for our fruit trees and other perennial crops, it may be given after 36 month. And that logo is PGS India Organic and uh, now you can believe it is totally organic in nature and consumer can take. If you see this is the PGS India structure, we have seen this is come under the Department of Agriculture cooperation and farmer's welfare. After that, the national advisory body is there, national executive committee body is there, PGS India secretariat the body I have already taken is located in the Gaziabad. After that, different zonal council is there and regional council is there. And their mandate is to see the process and operational module, crop production module, livestock monitors there and from the crop production molecule different type of things is there. Individual farmer producer can be company, individual farmer can also, also apply for the PGS certification. Some local farmer they can move 5, 10, 20 farmer they can also apply for this. Otherwise large area certification, suppose we know there is a very huge area just has been done in case of Sikkim, where the whole state has been being declared as organic. No entry of any inorganic fertilizer pesticide has been movement. Suppose particularly a government want to make one whole district as organic. They are already farmers are using very less or there is a very high value crop. And a certain state government want to promote organic farming for the whole district. Then it will cut the large area certification of traditional organic area. So for their standard will be little bit different. This all thing is mandated under the different just given out rules and standards by the PGS system. If you see different type of zonal council is there. Regional council is Gaziabad and his headquarters is in Delhi, Uttarakhand, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh. Similarly, there is regional center for Bengaluru, it, Bengaluru is there and it is for the Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Lakshidev. There is also center in the Bhuvaneshwar in Odisha and it will cover for the PGS system for which state? Odisha, Sukkim, Andaman and Nikopur. One center is in the Pachkula and that will cover the Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Jammu Kashmir and Imphal. This Imphal is situated in the northeast and it will area the cover Assam, Orunachal Pradesh, Meghalaya, Mizoram, Manipur, Nagaland, Tripura. Similarly, for the our middle part of our India is Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand is there. For the western part, this is center is situated in the Nagpur and which will cover two states, Maharashtra, two state Maharashtra and Nagpur and also the eastern part of India, it is situated in Punjab and the area under Bihar, West Bengal, Eastern UP come here and if you go to the extreme western part of our India, one is present in the Gandhinagar, the whichever the states will come under this system, Gujarat, Damaniu, Dadra, Nagar, Hibli. So, under this nine regional zones, all of the states and union territories has been covered. So, whenever you go for particular organic farming, for a PGS system, some group of farmers, he have to situate it, suppose in West Bengal state, then probably he have to go for the regional center organic farming of the Patna and they will help you how to get the certification process. 
and their role is also clearly detected and their capacity building is doing on and also they, they are the appealing authority is there, they are also the monitoring of the PGS product through residue testing, they may be sometime take your produce and they can also test the wherever this is organic residue is there or not in different sort of accredited lab and any other activities by this different type of journal council the PGS system is running. And if you see there is also crop production certification, so may are, maybe you are certifying some produce, maybe organically different type of vegetable, your spices or maybe fruits, maybe individual farmer, maybe different group farmer or you can also go for the last area certification, maybe district wise or state wise. Similarly, you can also go for the processor, you can make some different type of value added production. So, you have to be also assured in the case of value addition or post harvest, you are not mixing any things which is not permanent under the organic farming. You can also go for the animal husbandry, organic meat, organic fish, organic honey and organic egg, different types of. So, this is all the role of the regional councils. So, formation of local group is very much important whenever you grow for your organic farming and you want to do the certification for the PGS that is participatory guarantee scheme system. So, what is the rule? Minimum 5 members is needed at the limit, same village or coach by village can be regulated with each other, participation women farmer can be assured, at least 25 percent of the member have undergone training on PGS guarantee scheme because a farmer whenever you want to go for organic farming, he needs some training. How to go? So, it is better whenever he will get some capacity building activities and whatever the different type of sources of the organic farming and what is prohibited in organic farming, what is not prohibited. If there is some insect pest and disease attack, how we will control my pest from in organic production system without using any insecticide and fungicide and how we can rely different type of this natural or biological pest control method. So, capacity building development is always needed to get a better yield. And ultimately, no restriction on the size of holding. One single member should not exceed 50 percent of the total group of the land. So, there is group diversification. Suppose we are hectoring 100 hectare area and only one farmer is being 90 hectare and all the rest farmers is very less, then there will be biasness to one farmer. That is why in this process we have a one restriction, even you are grouping 10 farmer, 20 farmer, but the land of the total area of 50 percent should not concert for a particular farmer so that there will be equal distribution. Similarly, entire farm with livestock within 24 months and there is the different type of this local group is always necessary. Individual farmer certification also done. Suppose a farmer want to go his certification and he is staying in a very remote place, very in a high hills, but there is a lot of produce he produces and he want to certification. So, in this edition, no PGS India group is nearby, no other farmer is being interested initially. And so, what in this condition regional council will assist such farmer in verification in country of the guarantee system. So, for that may be standard procedure is little bit different, but it is not necessary even there will be no 5 or 10 you cannot go for your organic certification. Large continuous traditional default organic areas to organic under. So, state department and journal council certificate one that is synthetic chemical inputs like fertilizer, pesticides, etcetera and genetically modified organisms and genetically modified seeds are not used during the last three years. So, whenever you make certain area, so you have made declared will restrict the use of all the insecticide, fungicide, pesticides, fertilizer in this district, otherwise in this state. So, for last three years you are not doing any this type of activities, you are not allowed. Similarly, second certificate from the administrative side is that they ban, so that not only you can collect from the outside, you cannot ban all this produce, all these inorganic fertilizer pesticide you cannot ban, you cannot use your own farm when there will be some government regulation you have to do that. So, there will be some administrative rule is there and supply of the GOM seed agro inputs in the different area. So, if these two now you cannot ban, you cannot sell, you cannot use and you also cannot collect from the other area, then it is assured there is no inorganic input or inorganic pesticide or fertilizer has gone to this particular area. Then the certification will be easy for that large process. And all the growers undertake the PGS pledge and sign the pledge. And gram panchayat issue endorsement, yes, it is going to organic, they have not used any type of inorganic fertilizer or pesticide. And pass a resolution for adapting and allowing only organic farming with their demographic limits. So, there will be different type of memorandum of understanding and organic farming this way certification we are promoting in a cluster approach, not a single individual basis. Maybe whole village has been taken or there is different village under the gram panchayat can be taken under the promotion of organic farming. So, register the area under the PGS web portal, 
then create par appraisal committee, complete first PR appraisal, submit the report and there will be lots of verification committee may visit to ensure that the defined area is organic since last 3 years and issue certificate otherwise they can also cancel the certificate. After that they will given the organic certification for this large area. So, under the registration under and training on organic farming, documentation and marketing, there are lots of also standard protocols. And you have to follow different type of this standard protocols so whenever you grow for organic farming. Also, it is very much easy as compared to the third party, but there is some documentation engineer if you are go for the PGS system. So, what are the different points of evaluation for organic farming standards? One is first is the habitat management, whatever you management your ecosystem, your very very diversity, we are growing one crop or different type of crops in your cropping system. Integration of livestock, I have told already is because only then you can get the quality manure within your own farm. Otherwise, if you are taking the manure from the outside, you do not know the quality and simply whatever the medicine use, whatever the vaccination, whatever the soil and water conservation use, contamination control, if there is some water is coming from the sea sludge, how you are managed, what is the physical barrier, whatever the seal leader painting material, what is the source, it is chemically treated or chemically untreated, what is the fertilization, which type of manure are you using, whatever the pest management you have, you have applied in insecticide or you are only go for the organic pest control, cleanliness of the equipment, because sometimes equipment may go to the some other area or other farm and there may be chemical mooks in their tire and come, so you have to also so clean or not and what about the storage because there are lots of contamination in case of storage and transport also whenever all these, these things have to evaluate it after that only proper certification can be given. Present status of the PGS if we see it has been started in the year of 2011 due to the need of the government no government failed because there are lots of organic farmers they cannot claim or they cannot get the certification under the third party. So now you will see the active we have different type of farmers group about 41,861 group present in area and what is the total farmer? The farmer is also very high 11 lakh 52,000. So, lots of farmers are now are is registered under this PGS system and total area you see 7.5 lakh hectare. This is a good amount. Active certification or read one and total certification we have got 36, 2, 3 lakhs. And the, in this online system has been created, online portal has been created how a farmers or a farmers group can enter into the PGS portal with giving all the documents and he can get the certification. If you see there is the participatory guarantees coming up India, this is the site under the Department of Agriculture, Cooperation and Farmers Welfare, what is the local group login and the large area certification login or individual farmer grouping. You have to according to select. If you go to the local group, you may be some production of different type of you can produce user ID as well as the password and whenever you get time, you can fill whatever the document documents engineered, how much area is going to do, whatever the sources of fertilizer you have previously, whatever the different type of crops you are growing, which crops you want to grow the organic farming, what is your soil, what is the irrigation source, all these things you have to also mention here, but it is little bit easy as compared to the third party certification. If you see the scope certificate is there. And this course certificate is given by the signature of the PGS group and there will be also different type of oath taking or pledge taking. So, I will not use trust is very important and also the farmers group they visit one each other fields and they not alone by their combination effect they can assure there should be the transparency and trust so that they are growing the PGS system, their certification is pure and there is not adulteration and other things. Only after all this process they are getting the certification to sell their market, but you cannot sell this produce in the international market, you have to sell this produce only within the domestic market of India. What is the advantage of PGS and what are the limitation? Out of the two certification process, the advantage of the PGS is procedures are simple, documents are basic and farmer understand the local language. All members live close to each other because PR apprentices live in the same village, they have better access to the surveillance. Mutual recognition very much important and support between PGS groups and unlike the grower group certification system, PGR offers every farmer individual certificate. So, they give suppose 10 farmers is there and the individual farmers will get each certificate and he can carry his certificate to the market, this is my organic produce and I have the certificate, this means my produce is the organic. But what is the limitation? The only you can organize and perform a group in local cluster village and is applicable only to farm activities, livestock by PGS, individual farmer or group of farmer smaller than 5 members are not covered. So, there is some restriction is there. 
and the is also ensure traceability unlike the product of the custody of the PGS group. So, sometimes some consumer can tell oh it is organic it is PGS, but I do not know in the transportation and storage system. So, there may be some, but you have have the trust and you can sell your produce in the domestic, but you cannot sell this produce in case of the international market. Similarly, labeling of organic produce, labeling of every produce is needed, every brand is needed, maybe your watch, maybe your cloth. If, if you go for any cheap company or any biscuit, labeling and your brand value is very much important. Only then a farmer or a entrepreneur or a seller get the desired price. If you see the PGS green, it is safe food, but it is not under 100 percent certification process. So, it is PGS green, but if you see the PGS India organic or Joybik Bharat, it is organic, it is fully organic, other you can get the Joybik Bharat and also India organic produce obtained from fully organic field. So, this type of different type of organic products, organic logo is important. And according to by seeing the logo, a consumer can understand whether it has gone through the PGS process, whether it has gone through the NPV standard process, whether it is organic farming, it has been under the conversion period, otherwise it has completed the conversion period and accordingly they can choose and give the premium price. This regulation if you see, FSSI regulation is very much important for organic products winning the confidence of the consumer. So, if you run the organic and joybik, this is PGS organic, joybik Bharat, India organic also the India organic joybik Bharat is there, FSSI license number is there, the certification is number is already given by the FSSI number, consumer verification number is already been given. After that 100 percent traceability to the producer level. So, when you are purchasing the market, when you get all these things. So, if there is something bad happened or you have the doubt the integrity of anything, you can know for where actually this product has been done, where well this crop or particular produce has been produced. So, you can trace. So, this is very much important and they has gone all through the FCCI regulations. If you see the creation of farmer institution, whenever we are importing different type of PGS, there is a need of some farmer institution. There may be farmer producer groups, maybe 5, 10, 20 farmers. There are lots of self help group also we can use for this organic certification. And there is a very much need of value much addition. Every time we cannot sell any product in the market, there is a need of some post harvesting processing and value addition. Probably you cannot use ginger, you cannot store, but if you also ginger paste, you can you sell. Similarly, turmeric you can not store for very high time, but if you want this curcumin high content turmeric powder, you can form your organically produced turmeric, you can produce the turmeric powder. After that, you can sell in the market. So, this value addition and bending is very much important especially in case of organic farming. So, value chain collection the aggregation center is there, where is the warehouse, storage, processing facility is there and sales outlet is also there. So, if you see by this different type of process and different type of this value chain infrastructure, a farmer or a farmer producer organizes, they can make lots of organic produce and sell in the market. If you see our Indian domestic organic mass and possession, in 2020, our whatever the organic vision is about 4330 crore. But if you see whatever the growth is projection in case of 2025, there is a huge demand for our in nationally also for people are preferring organic produce. People are ready to pay extra money for this organic produce. And there is an estimate by 2025, the our domestic organic market will reach 25,000 crore. So, this is a very huge amount. So, lots of farmers and entrepreneurs, they have the scope to get a very good amount of money by scientifically doing organic farming in their farm and by the certification process and after the value addition. So, brand building for trust among the consumer. Brand building is very much important because brand have the position. We always go for no for this is for Philips, this is for Raymond's. So, whenever branding has been done, so consumer will be aware, oh now this brand is very good. So, always we have to try to promote different type of organic brand and if you see they have the attributes is given, what is the benefits is given beliefs, brand name selection is very much important, what is the brand sponsorship that is manufacturing brand, private brand, licensing and what is the different type of brand strategy you are doing internal branding. So, this type of not probably for a farmers, but when some entrepreneurs of some private company they want to sell their organic produce in the national or international market, that is very much helpful. And if you see authenticity of the organic products, winning the confidence of the consumer is very much needed. So, if it is PGN by different type of logo, Joybik Kheti or PGS India and the different verification number 
and if there is already needed for verification you please by visit where everywhere where farmer is producing farmer's name his location his client climatic condition is given accordingly you can select so when the needs of all the authenticity of the organic produce is been there and then only there is a very much chance to sell our product in the international market and if you see what is the different type of organic brands maybe sugar brown one based organic Organic India Tulsi Green Tea, it is available everywhere you go to the national market, there is a certain brand. Similarly, there are a different brand, Chabbis Mantra Organic, Just Organic, this is a different type of brand, every private company or any entrepreneurs, they are giving certain name and after the different type of logo, the branding is very much important, unless you are getting good quality brand, you will get very high price. This is Tamil Nadu. Tamil Nadu state also organic mission they are developing helping not only for the international marketing or the third party certification also for the PGS India brand. So, PGS India brand where farmers can get their certification from their Tamil Nadu state agency and they can produce although they cannot sell this produce outside of India, but within India they can sell and their consumer can prefer because they are also a very equally good and very pesticide residue less free. So, farmers can take However, this PGS brand probably get some lower price, but consumer will be happy to get quality product production in lower price also as compared to the international market. So, if you see the our organic produce or mostly use is the soy meal above 57 percent, but we have a very less share in case of production of the vegetables, spices, fruits, dairy products. So, this is the new major area where organic farming will stand high where after the certification and value addition, we can sell this type of produce in the international market. And if you see state wise, Madhya Pradesh has the highest quantity in not only on the amount, but also in the total value or crore. It is more than 2683 crore. Second, we are total value is the Maharashtra and Gujarat. And if you see, these are the different type of state wise export. So, India has a opportunity global market is very much enhancing for this organic products, the growth rate is very high, consumer want this organic produce. So, there is a very much good scope for organic, wherever people are going for organic with very loose amount of very less amount of inorganic fertilizer and pesticide, but certification is very much necessary only then you can sell your produce and get this premium price. Country wise if you say exported quantity whatever in India we are selling, we are selling maximum quantity to USA, after that we have Europe and the Canada. So, whenever we go for organic farming and certification process, we have to see which type of produce and which country I have to say. So, our standard regulation should be there. For USA, maybe they have developed some other, another rules. For European Union, maybe have rules is be different. So, you have to always take care of these international issues whenever you are want to certification for your organic produce and sell in this international market. There are some challenges is there. Quality and safety standard is quality is less than your produce, maybe it will be discarded in the international market, you cannot sell. Market intelligence is very much needed, you have to know where the market will be, price will be high. Brand promotion is there, farmers knowledge, capacity building of the stakeholders, demand and supply balance, lack of access, supply chain and certification. There are some challenges, but government is doing very high. There are lots of farmers, various interpreters, lots of NGO and agencies working and we can just overcome these challenges or barriers. There is different also in the portal is there in our government has been started that is organic key marketing. By here you can see what is the different type of organic market present in India and what is the price of a particular commodity. Accordingly, you can select your produce and sell on that market. And if you see government has also promoted a mission scheme that is mission organic value chain development for only in the northeastern part of India. Why? Because in northeastern part of India climate is very favorable, crop diversity is very high, everywhere they are maintaining livestock. And they are using very less amount of inorganic pesticide and fertilizer. So, you can tell they are organic by tradition or default. So, it will be very easy to convert that area and Sikkim is already going organic for last several years. And if you see this is the different goals, their target is the 150 farmer producer companies in the northeast, up to 1 lakh farmer member, 1 lakh area have to be certified and there will be all different type of processing unit and different bending is doing. You see their headquarters is in Delhi and organic mission they are provided for all the state Nagaland, Mizoram, Meghalaya, Orunchal Pradesh and also Tripura and value chain component is there and farmer producer company is there and they are giving lots of finance trail. government is giving too much money for creating of the capacity building, production activity, transport facility, warehouse, cold house. So, this is government is giving financial help 
And if you see this is the different type of value chain model, you have the state organic mission up to the service facilitation agency and you have different type of cluster. This is farmer producing company, you have made a cluster of 500 groups, maybe cluster of 1000 group and after that they are producing, there is a small small warehouse and after that that will come to the industry and after the industry you can sell into the different type of national or international market. So, this is the value chain model is exist and there are different type of brand is also being promoted that is Naga Organic, Tripura Organic, O Megha Meghalaya, Mission Organic also is there for Manipur, it is for Orunachal Pradesh, Mission Organic Mizoram, Sikkim Organic. So, this type of different branding is also promoted only when the branding and certification then only you can sell your produce then only the farmers will get a sufficient quantity of money. So, by this also the certification is little bit lengthy, but this is very much necessary. Also, there is third party certification rules, some guidelines and other theirs, but it is very much necessary for go for the third party certification for selling your produce in the international market. But if you want to sell your produce within the Indian market for the domestic market, so government has initiated the PG system and it is very easy to fill, very easy to manage and very easy to get the certification process by getting some farmers group and by also, but you have to follow certain rules and regulation and standards. Only after that you get the certification and you can sell your produce either nationally or internationally for a very high premium price. Thank you.